हेलो भरत हेलो जयन हेलो जतिन हेलो इरफान थैंक यू थैंक यू भरत थैंक यू फॉर योर वर्ड्स ऑफ एप्रिसिएशन हेलो सिंधु आई होप एवरीथिंग इज सेट राइट नाउ एम आई विजिबल एम आई ऑडिबल कैन एनवन जस्ट कंफर्म मी एम आई विजिबल एंड ऑडिबल टू एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग शिवम Perfect, perfect. Thank you, brother. So now, <coughs> good evening, my dear friends. Uh, Dr. Azam here, the Faculty of Anatomy, on the An Academy platform right now. Welcome to the An Academy platform. And uh, here, I'm uh, here to discuss along with you the cadaveric images of the new anatomy, keeping in view the recent trend. Uh, as we have seen in the November AIMS exam, there are like so many questions asked based on the cadaveric images. Now, uh, nowadays, you know, like the Im image-based question, which were uh, as asked in the, you know, asked from the textbooks and all those things, that has become like an old, old, olden days, right now, guys. And nowadays, they are asking the questions based on the cadaveric images directly. So, keeping in view that one, let's have a discussion based on the cadaveric images of the new anatomy today. see <clears throat> how we are going to deal with this session right now is that okay based on my uh, you know view or my uh, experience regarding the exams and all what i have seen in each and every you know uh, competitive exam one section of the brain will be definitely asked either it will be like you know the coronal section of the brain or the sagittal section of the brain or the transverse section of the brain so today in this a uh, one hour of the youtube session i'll be making you perfect with all the three sections of the brain that is the coronal section of the brain the sagittal section of the brain and then we are going to see the transverse section of the brain one by one now as you are able to see on the on the screen you are able to see the coronal section of the brain right now coronal section of the brain now first of all like what are the things to be appreciated in this diagram here the moment you look at this diagram of the coronal section you are able to see a ventricle here right now and this will be the lateral ventricle guys and this is the another lateral ventricle here and these two lateral ventricle continue down into the third ventricle here and why are the foramen here right known as the, known as the foramen of monroe so this is the lateral ventricle here and this is the another lateral ventricle here and they are connected to the third ventricle with the help of foramen of monroe so let me just write down here <clears throat> this is the lateral ventricle and this will be the third and this septum here will be known as the septum pellucidum there will be a thin translucent septum and this is known as the septum pellucidum okay so let me just write down here right now guys the septum between the two lateral ventricles here this septum here will be the septum pellucidum and now the most important thing is just below this septum can you appreciate this structure here right now now this structure here will be the fornix and this thing we need to see in detail why because this has been tested many a times in the exam and in the aims exam it was given as a image based question now guys like how is this fornix present here right now <clears throat> first of all observe me here everyone Uh, i hope you have studied about the limbic system in the limbic system first of all you'll be having what hippocampus there'll be hippocampus on the either side of the brain that hippocampus from the hippocampus begins the fornix and now i want you all to look at my hands here right now hippocampus hippocampus on both the sides and from the hippocampus begins the fornix and the fornix both of them will first of all come closer and they are moving forward and then they are moving away and then they are going and joining the mammillary bodies i repeat again look at my hands here hippocampus and hippocampus and these two from here begins the fornix and fornix will move forward and then go and join with the mammillary body 
If you want to see the same thing in the image here right now, let me show you one more cadaveric image here right now, guys. Now, in this image, you can clearly see here, this will be the hippocampus part here. And from the hippocampus part begins the fornix vela part. And this fornix here is going to take all the way turn here right now. And finally, it's going and joining with the mammillary body here. Okay. And we have taken a coronal section of this one here right now. So we have taken a section of this. So now, my dear friends, I hope you are getting the complete orientation here from the hippocampus and hippocampus begins the fornix and from both the sides it will come closer and then move away and join the mammillary body. And we are taking which section? Coronal section. Therefore, we are able to see, <coughs> you know, the fornix in this manner over here. Okay. Now, these two things like the fornix and the septum pellucidum in the middle, septum pellucidum and the fornix in the middle here, these two are going to form the medial wall the medial wall of the lateral ventricle. This is the medial wall of the lateral ventricle. And apart from that, above here, I'm able to see these are the bundle of, you know, axons, which are connecting the right half of the cerebrum with the left half. And we all know, right half and the left half of the cerebrum are connected with the help of bundle of white uh, fibers, uh, bundle of axons, which will be known as commissures. And this will be the largest commissure, that is corpus callosum. So this one will be your corpus callosum. Let me just write down in short here as corpus callosum. So you can clearly appreciate here, corpus callosum is the one which is going to form the roof of the lateral ventricle. So this is the lateral ventricle here, and this is the roof of the lateral ventricle here. So roof will be formed by the corpus callosum. Done. So I'm done with the medial wall, I'm done with the roof. Now let us see what is forming the floor of the lateral ventricle here. Fine. Now in the floor of the fat, uh, lateral ventricle, I am able to find first of all a nucleus here. This nucleus will be the caudate nucleus. And then if you are able to appreciate here, this one will be the thalamus part. Okay. So if this is the caudate nucleus and this is the thalamus part here and they are actually found in what? They are found in the floor of the lateral ventricle. Apart from that, if you are able to appreciate here, I am able to find a vein in the middle here right now and that will be your thalamostriate vein. I repeat again, it is thalamostriate vein. These structures in the coronal section. So how you are going to approach this topic? I mean to say, if this image is given in the exam, how you are going to approach? Yes, just first of all, look at the lateral ventricle. So lateral ventricle, I repeat again once very quickly. Roof will be formed by the corpus callosum. The medial wall will be formed by the septum pellucidum. And then there will be fornix here. And the flow, flow will be formed with the caudate nucleus and the thalamus. And in the middle, there will be a vein here that is thalamostriate vein. Fine here. Now, apart from this, what else we can appreciate in this diagram here right now? In this diagram, you're able to appreciate one more nucleus here. This one will be the lentiform nucleus, guys. That nucleus will be the lentiform nucleus. Okay. So this nucleus here will be the lentiform nucleus. I hope if you uh, recall, Okay, the caudate nucleus and the lentiform nucleus, all this will be the parts of the basal ganglia. Okay, now between these, I'm able to find the white matter fibers, which are actually projecting like, you know, up and down these projection fibers. And this is actually will be your internal capsule. These white matter fibers, which are projecting up and down here, this is nothing but internal capsule. Now this internal capsule, if you continue above here, okay now, at the level of corpus callosum here, you can see the fibers will be dispersed. They are beautifully dispersed like fan shaped structure. And these fibers which are dispersed here, like a fan shaped structure here, that will be your corona radiata fibers. That will be corona radiata fibers. And if you ask me the landmark, yes, the internal capsule will be up to the corpus callosum and from there begins the corona radiata. Fine, we are able to appreciate each and everything here. And if you follow downwards here right now, yes, this is like a simple part here right now, guys, the midbrain part here. Okay, then this will be the pons here. And this one is the medial oblongator cerebellum here. Like, this is like easy things which we can appreciate. The most important thing I would like to, you know, ask you to concentrate on this part here. Right now. Apart from this, guys, have you ever thought, okay, why is this internal capsule known as the internal capsule? Why is this internal capsule known as the internal capsule? Come on. Yes, I'm able to find a nucleus here and this nucleus will be your lentiform nucleus. Okay, learn it conceptually like this. Lentiform nucleus will be actually lens shape and there is like one capsule inside and there is one capsule outside. So there is an internal capsule and there is an external capsule of the lentiform nucleus. So let me just show you here. This capsule here will be the internal capsule. And if you are able to appreciate in this diagram, I'm able to find a thin sheet of white matter here and this will be the external capsule. 
don't worry about this one guys i'll show you in one more diagram also later on but here i want you to just you know start making the concept from here onwards so this one will be the internal capsule and then there will be an external capsule enclosing your lens shaped lentiform nucleus in the middle fine now <coughs> further further here yes you are able to find a, a thin sheet of gray matter here right now guys yes this thin sheet of the gray matter here will be the claustrum don't worry i'll write everything here first of all observe the diagram here this will be the claustrum and that will be insular so let me just write down all these names here right now so that you can also you know learn this one so this here will be the internal capsule this is internal capsule here and outside this lentiform nucleus here this one will be the external capsule here this is external capsule here and this here okay a thin sheet of white matter outside here will be the extreme capsule this is extreme capsule here fine and you already know <clears throat> okay the lentiform nucleus here and i just have to tell you about one thing over here okay what is this thin sheet of the gray matter here sir let me just take another color here right now yeah this thin sheet of the gray matter over here will be your claustrum claustrum and this uh, hidden lobe here will be the insula okay so just try to remember in order it's like white matter and the gray matter first okay so let me just quickly recap this rapid fire for the last and final time and then we'll go ahead with the next image right now this image everything will be done now in this image yes this is the internal capsule here on the medial side of the internal capsule you are able to find the caudate nucleus and the thalamus and on the lateral side you will be able to find lentiform nucleus that is further enclosed by external capsule followed by the claustrum then extreme capsule and then roof medial wall and the floor of that one so you are perfect with the coronal section so all my students if the question comes image third ventricle in this diagram itself you can learn the lateral wall the laterally laterally it will be having thalamus and below thalamus will be having what's a hypothalamus so thalamus and hypothalamus so lateral wall of the third ventricle is formed by thalamus and hypothalamus so ab hum kya karenge now what we are going to do right now is that we are going to cut exactly in the middle i mean to say we are going to take a sagittal section sagittal section and i want my students to keep an eye on third ventricle laterally you'll be already having what thalamus and hypothalamus and even my students can learn what is there in the roof also third ventricle in the roof of that i'm able to find fornix okay and just below the fornix here i'm able to find the hanging structure here this is nothing but the plexus that is choroid plexus so third ventricle roof of the third ventricle will be having the fornix and then just below that you're able to find the choroid plexus hanging from here and then laterally you'll able to find the thalamus and hypothalamus so keep this in mind with this orientation let me cut exactly in the middle here that is section here i'm cutting exactly in the middle one half let's remove and throw it off the other half i'm turning like this you are seeing me from a side here right now so when you are seeing from a side in the sagittal section let's see how the diagram looks like fine now please look at this diagram here right now guys this is the sagittal section so this will be the coronal section here right now i'm cutting exactly in the middle and then yes this will be the sagittal section fine now in this diagram here in the sagittal section <clears throat> first of all always what you do is in any diagram which will be given to you try to do one thing start from the known things yes below here below here yes i'm able to find here this one will be the medulla oblongata here right now and just above the medulla oblongata here this one will be the pons here right now guys this is the pons and if this is the medulla oblongata and the pons here right now guys just behind that this will be the cerebellum part so there will be medulla and then there will be pons and then there will be cerebellum behind and if this is the pons medulla and the cerebellum here in between them i'm able to find a ventricle here yes obviously this will be the fourth ventricle which ventricle is this one guys this will be the fourth ventricle and if this is the fourth ventricle over here yes following down the fourth ventricle will continue down into what it will continue down into the central canal of the spinal cord and if you follow the same fourth ventricle above it will continue into the aqueduct of sylvius here right now and this aqueduct of sylvius will lead into yes what is this one this one will be the third ventricle here guys so this ventricle here this will be the third ventricle here and you can clearly appreciate here this aqueduct of sylvius will be passing yes via this mid brain here right now guys what is that one mid brain so this one is the mid brain here then this one is the pons here and middle oblongata here okay these three are going to form your brain stem okay behind that pons middle you will be able to find the 
and I'll write like everything for you, like each and every structure I'll write it for you. But right now I want you to just look at this diagram, simply look at this diagram, I'll write everything for you. Sir. If this is the third ventricle, appreciate here, just above this, this will be the fornix part here right now. Okay, this will be the columns of the fornix here right now. So this will be the fornix part here. Okay, and I told you already fornix here and below that what do you have here right now guys, the choroid plexus. So try to understand here, this is the third ventricle just above that the fornix, okay, which is actually coming from the hippocampus and joining with the mammillary body. Are you able to understand that? So now we are saying in sidereal section. So in sidereal section you are able to find the fornix here and this will be the columns splenium well apart. So the corpus callosum will be having like four parts, the rostrum, genu, body and the splenium part. Rostrum, genu, body and the splenium part. Fine. Now just below the rostrum here, if you are able to appreciate, there will be one more commissure here. This will be the anterior commissure. This will be the anterior commissure here right now. Take it. And just below this anterior commissure here, there will be a thin sheet here. Okay, and this will be the lamina terminalis. Yes, it will be the lamina terminalis. Okay, and now this anterior commissure here and this lamina terminalis here. Now these two are the one which are going to form the anterior wall of the third ventricle. Yes, the anterior commissure and below that followed by that. Yes, there will be lamina terminalis and that is going to clearly, you can clearly see there, you can appreciate then that is forming the anterior wall of the third ventricle. Now once that is done guys, now let us appreciate here the floor of the third ventricle and, and, and remember one thing, in whatever ventricles you prepare for your exam, in each and every ventricle, you know, the floor will be very much important. The floor of the ventricle, you have to learn it very perfectly. Most of the questions will be asked based on the floor itself. So please observe here right now guys, in this diagram, see this is the frontal lobe. This is the frontal lobe here right now and we chiasm. And in this diagram, this th structure here will be the optic chiasm here right now guys. So this will be the optic cast. Okay. So in this diagram, this will be the optic chasm. So try to understand or correlate the structures here right now. So below here, you'll be having like eyeballs. Eyeballs will continue to your, you know, the optic nerve will be beginning from there and they're going to cross. That is optic chasm. And then just behind this optic chasm, yes, what is this structure here right now and how to remember this one, okay, I don't want my students to just simply mug up, okay. So try to understand, correlate, look here, in this previous diagram already I told you, if this is the third ventricle, just adjacent to that you'll be having what's a thalamus and below the thalamus will be having hypothalamus. So third ventricle later you'll be having like thalamus and hypothalamus. So if I am cutting exactly in the middle, on the side what are you able to see there, you are able to find here, yes, this one will be the thalamus part here right now. And if this is the thalamus part here right now guys, on the side here right now, there's a third ventricle, then this is the thalamus and just below the thalamus, you should have obviously the hypothalamus. And hypothalamus, yes, everyone knows right from first year MBBS onwards, hypothalamus, the floor of that will be having, yes, an extension that is the median eminence and that will continue down into the infundibulum. So that infundibulum or pituitary stalk will go and get attached to the pituitary gland, which is not seen here. But what is this structure if you're seeing from here? That is infundibulum. Okay, so just behind the optic chasm, I'm able to find the infundibulum. And this will be the, you know, the tuber cinerium part along with the infundibulum. And behind that, you're able to find the mammillary body. This is the mammillary body here right now, guys. Okay, okay, the fornix will come here and meet with the mammillary body. Fine. The hippocampus fornix and the fornix will come here and meet with the mammillary body. And just behind here, there'll be a posterior perforated substance. This is the posterior perforated substance, guys. Okay. And once you have understood all these structures here right now, I'll write down all those things. Don't worry about the writing part. Uh, this one will be the optic chasm. And just behind that, this part here will be the infundibulum part. Infundibulum, I'll just write down along with that here itself, the tuber cinerium part. Infundibulum along with the tuber cinerium part here. And this, of course, will be the mammillary body. I'll just write down here as MB. Everyone knows that this is the mammillary body here. And this here behind this part will be the posterior perforating substance. Posterior perforated substance. Now, now apart from that, now this part, please be very, very careful here right now. This is midbrain, fine. Just try to recall, if you have studied in your MBBS days, when you take a transfer section of the midbrain, when I'm taking a transfer section of the midbrain, 
in the transfer section of the membrane in the middle i am able to find the aqueduct without any doubt i am able to find the aqueduct of silvis in the middle now that is our important landmark okay the part which is behind the aqueduct aqueduct ke piche the part which is behind the aqueduct that is known as the tegmentum part and the part which is in front of the aqueduct that is known as the uh, sorry the part which is behind i'm extremely sorry the part behind the aqueduct is known as tectum part and the part in the front will be the tegmentum part okay so if this is the aqueduct here right now i repeat again if you are getting confused behind that that will be tectum and anteriorly there will be a tegmentum part so this part of the midbrain here this part will be actually the tegmentum part sir so i'll just uh, write down t here right now and i'm writing the full form here right now guys the t there stands for tegmentum part which is actually in front of the aqueduct and now whatever structures that we have written here all these structures are actually going to form the floor of the third ventricle you know that is going to form what's the floor of the third ventricle so i repeat again let us do it once together yes this is the optic chasm here and behind will be having like infundibulum here and followed by tubercinarium and then the mammillary body and the posterior perforated substance here and this one here will be the tegmentum part so all this together is going to form your floor of the third ventricle crystal clear now now welcome back here right now guys to the the posterior wall right now okay <clears throat> again i would like to say you you can try to take the landmark as your corpus callosum here right now corpus callosum has got the four parts and the rostrum genu body and the splenium part and if this is the splenium part here just below the splenium part this should be your landmark if this question comes or this image comes in the exam the splenium has to be your landmark just below the splenium you are able to find the pineal gland there will be a gland there that is a pineal gland and just below the pineal gland you will be able to find one more uh, commissure here that will be the posterior commissure above the pineal gland you'll be having like one more habenular commissure you're not able to appreciate that very well in this diagram here so try to take the landmark pineal gland above the pineal gland there'll be a commissure habenular commissure and below the pineal gland there'll be a commissure that is a posterior commissure and this is the aqueduct obviously you know that and these are the structures which are going to form the posterior wall of third ventricle so now the only work remaining let us just write down here let us just mark them so this gland here will be your pineal gland and just below the pineal gland here this one will be the posterior commissure posterior commissure and this here this duct here will be the aqueduct this will be the aqueduct of silvius and this all will be forming the posterior posterior wall of the third ventricle okay perfectly done so in this manner if you just take the third ventricle you can know, if you just consider the third ventricle automatically in the sagittal section everything everything will be done here right now guys so let us now revise everything in a rapid fire manner guys come on everyone here along with me right now so <clears throat> first of all start here like this guys if this is the third ventricle what is there on the lateral side of the third ventricle yes you'll be able to find yes the thalamus and the hypothalamus on the lateral aspect lateral side will be having thalamus and hypothalamus what is present in the roof of the third ventricle the fornix along with the, the choroid plexus here now let us cut exactly in the middle here right now yes the roof the fornix and the choroid plexus and then the lateral wall will be having thalamus and hypothalamus what is forming the anterior wall here yes there will be a commissure here there is an anterior commissure followed by the lamina terminalis and the floor will be actually formed by the optic chasm the infundibulum the tuber cinereum along with that one and mammillary body and posterior perforated substance and this is the tegmentum part the posterior wall is formed by the pineal gland and below the pineal gland there is a posterior commissure and then aqueduct this is forming the posterior wall fine here right now so that is about the sagittal section and remaining structures i hope everyone can easily manage that one guys is it okay so as i told you in the very beginning of this session already okay in each and every competitive exam at least like you know like one section of the brain is definitely given guys coronal section and sagittal section and transfer so we are trying to build the concept based on that one so coronal section is done and we are done with the sagittal section and now let's go towards the next section that is the transfer section let's become perfect with this diagram here right now guys the transfer section of the brain cerebral hemisphere ready first of all let me tell you okay we are taking this section at which level uh for example if this is your cerebral hemisphere here okay and located deep inside the cerebral hemisphere if this is the corpus callosum over here you already know the corpus callosum will be having the genu and the rostrum you know rostrum genu the body and the splenium part 
and in this diagram now what i'm trying to do is i'm taking trying to take a transverse section i'm going to cut the brain in this direction transverse section and then, rem then remove the part from above and then look from above so we are seeing from above so exactly at which level i'm taking the transverse section so i'm taking the transverse section at this level so therefore this bent in the front here is genu part here and this part posterior part here is the splenium part and obviously each and every student knows this lobe here is occipital lobe here right now and this is the frontal lobe here right now now the first thing what you do in this diagram here the catching point here is that try to understand this is like you know transverse section and in this diagram this here will be the frontal lobe here right now and this here will be the occipital lobe let us just compare our that diagram with this diagram here right now the frontal lobe and the occipital lobe done and now um, where is this genu part of the corpus callosum yes this part here will be the genu part of the corpus callosum guys this is the genu and then the body will continue from there and behind here this is the splenium part so this is the genu of the corpus callosum and this will be the splenium part of the corpus callosum comfortable now once you got the orientation here what i want my students to learn here is that you can clearly appreciate here from the genu there are some white matter fibers which are going and connecting with the frontal lobe from the genu here <clears throat> repeat again from the genu part here from the genu part here there are certain fibers going and connecting with the frontal lobe frontal lobe so these white matter fibers connecting with the frontal lobe here this will be known as the forceps minor what is that known as forceps minor and similarly from the splenium part you can appreciate here there are some white matter fibers which are going and connecting the occipital lobe and that will be the forceps major so it's so simple first orientation is important and once you're done with the orientation here guys yes what are these fibers here which are going from the genu to the frontal lobe forceps minor and these fibers which are connecting the splenium to the occipital lobe here this one will be the forceps major guys take it so from the genu to the frontal lobe will be forceps minor and from the splenium behind to the occipital lobe will be the forceps major now once you are done with this one i hope remaining structures in this diagram you will be able to clearly appreciate here yes you all know this one will be the caudate caudate lobe here and this behind here will be the thalamus part here and if this is the caudate and thalamus here this one will be the lentiform nucleus and between them this is internal capsule and this one here will be the external capsule and then followed by claustrum then extreme capsule here and this is the hidden lobe here that is the insula so better i will do one thing here i'll just write down uh, once more here right now so that you'll become perfect apart from that in the previous diagram you know uh, my screen i think it is a little bit bigger in this one i'm trying to see here in my phone so <clears throat> it is actually all the names are being covered on the other side so let me just write down once here if you have missed by chance so this is the caudate lobe here sorry caudate nucleus and this one will be the thalamus here and this one will be the lentiform nucleus and here this capsule here will be the internal capsule and outside the lentiform nucleus this part here right now guys okay this part i mean to say yes there will be a thin sheet of white matter there and that will be the external capsule okay and then outside that here again i am able to appreciate one more thin sheet of white matter here and this will be the extreme capsule extreme capsule so it's like very conceptual easy to remember and apart from that what is the remaining part here yes you can clearly see here this there is a thin sheet of gray matter here and this thin sheet of gray matter here this one will be the claustrum part and this hidden lobe here yes obviously everyone knows that this one will be the insula part here right okay so if you are able to appreciate all these things yes perfectly right you are done with this you know the transverse section of the brain here now in this transverse section of the brain whatever this ventricle that you are able to appreciate here that is the lateral ventricle i hope you know that the horns of that one you know the ventral horn the dorsal horn and all so this will be the yeah, <clears throat> the lateral ventricle fine so let us just do a quick recap of this transverse section of the brain this here anteriorly is the genu and then you'll be having the body here which is going and going connecting with the splenium part but you are not able to appreciate the body here right now and from the genu part the fibers going to the frontal lobe this will be forceps minor and from the splenium part there are certain fibers going and connecting with the occipital lobe forceps major caudate nucleus and thalamus on the medial side of the internal capsule laterally you'll be having the lentiform nucleus 
and then lateral to that there will be external capsule and then you'll be having the plostrum and then extreme capsule and then insula fine and uh, we can't appreciate that in this diagram here right now but you know you need to just imagine here if there's a genuine part and the splenium part and both of them are connected with the help of a body and from the body the fibers are going laterally and those fibers will be tapetum tapetum be really careful just now in the transfer section of the midbrain i told you about the tectum and tegmentum now this is not tectum and tegmentum this is tapetum so from the body you know the fibers are going laterally and those fibers will be the tapetum fibers okay and those are here actually these are the tapetum fibers here you can appreciate here okay and that completes actually all the three of the brain cell the coronal section mm -hmm. send it you can easily download uh, i'll try to you know coordinate with the an academy platform there and try to give you a link for that one so I'll, I'll send you the pdf part don't worry about that perfect so i hope you'll be able to manage these questions if these image based questions are coming i hope this is like easier right now now let us go to the next concept here right now guys now in this next concept what i'm trying to teach you here yes just observe here right now guys one important thing and i i, I hope you like really enjoy this part here right now now in this diagram already the moment you look at this diagram here you'll be able to appreciate this one is the midbrain here just below the midbrain this big part here is the pons here and below that this one is the middle oblongator and we have been learning from our childhood that yes the midbrain pons and the medulla all these three together are going to be known as the brain stem the stem of the brain okay the brain stem mid brain pons and medulla and i want all my students to you know learn the ventral aspect of the brain stem that is something more important here right so let us see the brain stem from the front but before seeing that let us you know just make one concept in mind first of all hello my dear friends look here in total we are having like you know 12 pairs of the cranial nerves and out of that 12 pairs of cranial nerves like how many cranial nerves will be beginning from the brain stem how many cranial nerves will be originating from the brain stem can anyone answer me how many cranial nerves will be originating from the brain stem can anyone answer that me that for me I'm just waiting for your comments here. Anyone? Chalo, look here. I'll, I'll I'll just tell you how to remember this one, guys. The cranial nerve number one will be the olfactory nerve. Olfactory nerve is the one which is going to you know <clears throat> begin from here. And the cranial nerve number two will be your optic nerve. Optic nerve is going to begin from here, you know, here, eyeball. So leaving one and two. This is the best way to remember this one, guys. Cranial nerve number one and two. That is olfactory and optic. leaving 1 and 2 remaining all your cranial nerves right from 3 to 12 will be originating from the brain stem that is midbrain pons and medulla so remember it like this cranial nerve number 1 and 2 leaving this 1 and 2 yes all your remaining cranial nerves are going to begin from where from the brain stem that is the midbrain pons and medulla so to appreciate that and to see that what you have to do is we need to just turn this in the front that means i want to see the ventral aspect and what i want my students to do right now is that compare these two diagrams right now guys so everyone here right now guys <clears throat> so what you do is compare this diagram now let me just turn this in the front once i turn this in the front the diagram will be something like this okay this is the ventral aspect of the brain stem and you can clearly see this one is the spinal cord here just above the spinal cord this one is the middle oblongata just above the middle of this one will be the pons and just above the pons this one is the midbrain part and now sir how can you tell this one is a midbrain part let us just correlate these two diagrams here right now sir so simultaneously just be along with me keep on looking at the diagram so in this diagram here you are, are you able to see optic chasm here yes try to appreciate the same thing in this diagram here yes i can clearly see this is the optic here right now and this optic chasm you are able to find the infundibulum and tuber cinereum if this is the infundibulum and tuber cinereum behind the mammillary bodies yes sir we are able to find behind that the mammillary bodies and just behind the mammillary bodies here i am able to find the posterior perforated substance beautiful yes sir i am able to appreciate the posterior perforated substance wow so in sequence optic chasm infundibulum mammillary body posterior perforated substance yes you are able to appreciate in this diagram here optic chasm infundibulum the mammillary bodies and the posterior perforated substance perfectly right so basically what i am trying to do is i am turning this brain stem ventrally so i am trying to see the ventral aspect of the brain stem now let us appreciate the other structures in this diagram here right now 
so first thing i want you all to learn that this part will be your midbrain part ventral aspect of the midbrain and in this i am able to see one nerve which is coming from here and this nerve will be the third cranial nerve the oculomotor nerve the cranial nerve number 3 and i can see there is one more nerve coming from behind here right now there is a cranial nerve number 4 so first point you remember cranial nerve number 3 and 4 third and fourth will be beginning from the midbrain third and fourth nerve will begin from where from the midbrain and out of these to remember the fourth cranial nerve trochlear nerve has got dorsal origin it will be originating dorsally then it is going to take a turn from behind and come anteriorly that is the reason why it will be having the longest intracranial course i repeat again listen very carefully it is longest intra cranial intra cranial course is it okay so third and fourth cranial nerve is going to originate from the midbrain part and once you are done with this one here this will be the cranial nerve number 5 so this will be the cranial nerve number 5 that is your trigeminal nerve that is coming out from your this big part is actually your pons okay so that is a trigeminal nerve that exits out from the you know pons and after that this part will be the medulla part and between the pons and medulla you'll be having the ponto medullary junction and at this ponto medullary junction you are able to appreciate here there is a cranial nerve number 6 coming out from here and later to that cranial nerve number 7 and then later to that there is a cranial nerve number 8 here right now so let me just write down them in order this is the cranial nerve number 6 and this one will be the cranial nerve number 7 and then this one will be the cranial nerve number 8 here right now guys and these three nerves they exit out from the ponto medullary junction cranial nerve number 6 7 and 8 and then coming to the medulla part here right now in the medulla part first of all i am able to find a median sulcus here right now and yes obviously we all know whenever there is a sulcus on either side there will be elevation okay now this elevation here is known as the pyramid here and this elevation here this one is known as the olive here okay so this is nothing but pyramid here and this is the olive here or uh, let me just write down the full form here right now guys this elevation here is olive and this elevation here will be the pyramid Fine here. Now, in one of the exam, they have even asked the question: Okay, why is this elevation formed? Sir? Why is this olive elevation formed there? Remember, beneath the, that olive, you will be able to find a nucleus there, and that nucleus will be the inferior olivary nucleus. So, because there is a nucleus beneath that inferior olivary nucleus, on the surface, you are able to find the elevation, and doctors have named it as olive. So, very simple here, right now, guys. So, the reason for olive is that you know because beneath that you are able to find a nucleus which nucleus inferior olivary nucleus now what is the reason of uh, pyramid here right now guys why is that elevation pyramid form have you learned about tracts there will be two uh, two types of tracts there will be ascending tracts and descending tracts and out of that descending tract if you remember okay whenever we had a regular class like face to face class yes each and every faculty will teach you about the descending tract that is a pyramid pyramid sir pyramidal tract okay and that pyramidal tract which is also known as the cortico spinal tract that tract is actually passing it is a descending now you know from the midbrain pons and medulla and when it comes in medulla in the medulla i hope you remember that very famous thing pyramidal decussation almost like 85 to 90% of the fibers will cross over onto the other side they will decussate pyramidal decussation and this is that tract the tract which is moving down that is your pyramid tract pyramidal tract and because of the pyramidal tract this elevation is formed here so i want all my students to be perfect with these two things two points here olive is formed due to inferior olivary nucleus and the pyramid is actually formed here this elevation is actually due to the tract that is the pyramid here pyramidal tract sir. sorry now the next thing here yes you can clearly appreciate here lateral to olive lateral to olive you are able to see cranial nerve number 9 here and this is the cranial nerve number 10 here and this is the cranial nerve number 11 So cranial nerve number nine, ten, and eleven they will exit lateral to olive. I hope you all know this nine, ten, eleven. They have a common nucleus known as nucleus ambiguus. And finally, finally, between the pyramid and the olive, there is a nucleus. Uh, there is a nerve exiting out here, and this nerve is your cranial nerve number twelve. That is your hypoglossal nerve. Okay. Okay. So between pyramid and the olive, there will be a hypoglossal nerve coming out. Are you okay with this one here right now? So as I told you in the beginning of this concept here, which cranial nerves are going to originate? from the brain stem the midbrain pons and medulla it is right from 3 to 12 you can clearly appreciate here now let us just quickly have a recap the rapid fire here the cranial nerve number 3 and 4 will begin from the midbrain remember the fourth is the only cranial nerve which has got the dorsal origin that is why longest intracranial course the cranial nerve number 5 will be originating from the pons coming out from the pons 
and the cranial nerve number 6 7 and 8 will come out from the ponto medial junction 9 and 11 lateral to olive <coughs> apart from that one more point to remember here 9th 10th and 11th cranial nerve these three cranial nerves they will be having a common nucleus and that is nothing but nucleus ambiguous nucleus ambiguous perfectly done now one more thing i want you to remember here is that in this diagram if this is the midbrain here right now guys if this is the midbrain here this will be one of the peduncle here known as the cerebral peduncle and there'll be another peduncle here okay in the midbrain when you take the transfer section there'll be three parts tectum tegmentum and the peduncle part cerebral peduncle part and in that cerebral peduncle part if you want to remember something in there this will this part will be the crest cerebri part but right now you know i don't want you to confuse with that one just remember simply this will be the cerebral peduncle here and this will be cerebral peduncle here and because we are having like two cerebral peduncles here in between them there is a fossa and this is known as the interpeduncular fossa the name is very meaningful here right now and this fossa in the middle will be your interpeduncular fossa it is between the two cerebral peduncles and always always in many of the exams they have asked what are the contents of the interpeduncular fossa and the way conceptually we are learning i hope my students will not at all find any difficulty here just look at the diagram and answer me yes i am able to find the infundibulum along with tuberculinarium i am able to find the mammillary bodies here right now mammillary body here right now and this one is the posterior perforating substance here right now and there will be cranial nerve number three present here all this will be the contents of interpeduncular fossa so simply make note of that it will consist of infundibulum and this infundibulum will be along with tuber cinerium and then just behind that i am able to appreciate mammillary bodies there will be mammillary bodies and just behind the mammillary bodies there will be posterior perforating substance and then just behind that there will be cranial nerve number 3 the third cranial nerve that is the oculomotor nerve so this will be the contents of your interpeduncular fossa. Fine. So this is the brain stem here right now. And brain stem in front of that, you'll be able to appreciate this is the structures. Perfect. Okay. So uh, mainly what I'm trying to tell you here is that whatever topics, you know, I'm going to teach you in the same order. You try to revise when you're learning, you revise in the same order. Why? Because that will make a concept in a proper manner. Okay. Now, once you are done with this one here, let us go towards the, the blood supply of the brain. How can we leave this topic in the discussion? Okay, no? The hot favorite of the examiners, the circle of illness. Now, in this diagram, you are able to appreciate all the, you know, the blood vessels here, the circle of illness and all those things. Now, guys, before identifying all these arteries here in this diagram, before tracing the arteries in this diagram, I want you to just recall. Okay, circle of illness to study, the best way to study is that, you know, when it comes to the blood supply of the brain, there are actually two systems. One is the posterior system, another one is the anterior system. Posteriorly, you'll be having the vertebral arteries. I hope you all know vertebral arteries. There'll be like, you know, the branches of subclavian artery. Subclavian artery will be divided into three parts, the first part, second part, and third part. And from the first part, you'll be getting like three branches and remember them as VIT, WIT, or the white, I mean, something like that. VIT, WIT. Okay, and V stands for the vertebral artery. So vertebral artery is a branch of the first part of the subclavian artery and it's going to ascend up. Okay. And uh, there are actually four parts of that one and all. We'll discuss later on in our regular classes. Don't worry about that. So vertebral artery will ascend up and then through the foramen magnum, through the foramen magnum, it will enter inside the cranium. And then it will combine to form your basilar artery and blah, blah. We'll study about that. So basically there is a posterior system which is formed by vertebral artery. And then the anterior system here, it is formed by your internal carotid artery here. So the internal carotid artery will enter here and then it will also contribute to a circle of pillars. So what we'll do is first of all, we'll make just you know a schematic diagram first and that will actually make it easy for you to recall very quickly. So I hope if you remember, there'll be two vertebral arteries in the posterior system from behind and the two vertebral arteries will combine together to form your basilar artery. And this basilar artery will be finally dividing into the posterior cerebral artery. So let me just write down the initials here right now guys. This one will be the vertebral artery here. And these two vertebral arteries will combine to form the basilar artery here. And the basilar artery will be finally finally dividing into the posterior cerebral artery. And this will be the posterior cerebral artery. 
and if you want to you know remember or you know write down write down here the vertebral arteries will be passing through the foramen and this foramen will be the foramen magnum okay now leave this posterior system here itself now welcome to the anterior system in the anterior system you'll be having the internal carotid artery and there'll be one more internal carotid artery from the other side so this one will be your ICA internal carotid artery internal carotid artery now this internal carotid artery will give a branch that will be your ACA that will be the ACA sir. what is this ACA anterior cerebral artery anterior cerebral artery I hope you all know that we are having like you know three types of cerebral artery anterior cerebral artery middle cerebral artery and the posterior cerebral artery in this diagram I am able to see anterior cerebral and the posterior cerebral where is the middle cerebral yes the same internal carotid artery will continue here this one will be the middle cerebral artery and the same internal carotid artery will continue here this one will be the middle cerebral artery perfect so from here we are able to learn one point here the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery these two are actually the branches of internal carotid whereas the posterior cerebral artery here is a branch of your basilar artery guys posterior cerebral artery is a branch of basilar artery clear with this once you are done with the anterior system and the posterior system let us join join them together right now guys yes the anterior cerebral arteries are joined together by anterior communicating artery a com anterior communicating artery and then this internal carotid artery come on my dear students is this internal carotid artery till now i told you about the two branches here one is anterior cerebral artery another one is a middle cerebral artery anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery and this internal carotid artery will give one more branch here right now and that is going to go and join with the posterior cerebral and this one will be the posterior communicating artery posterior communicating artery even that is also a branch of your internal carotid artery communicating artery and we can clearly see here on the screen that there is a circle formed here and this circle is known as the circle of willis circle of willis okay now here like you know first of all try to learn here itself like two categories of questions are possible okay, which arteries are forming circle of willis and which arteries are not forming the circle of willis so I, I request all my dear students to just make this diagram or try to you know practice this diagram once or twice and apart from that no need to mug up just look at this diagram and answer me which arteries are going to form the circle of willis yes number one posterior cerebral artery this one is the posterior communicating artery internal carotid artery and then the anterior cerebral artery and then the anterior communicating artery repeat the same thing on the other side anterior cerebral artery internal carotid artery the posterior communicating artery and then this one will be the posterior cerebral artery so these are the arteries which are forming circle of willis if you want to just write down here yes. which arteries are forming circle of willis circle of willis will be formed by the posterior cerebral artery posterior communicating artery internal carotid artery and then anterior cerebral artery and then anterior communicating arteries so these are all the arteries which are going to form form the circle of willis and one of the oldest question and the very famous question which cerebral artery is not forming circle of willis which cerebral artery is not going to form the circle of willis yes it is clearly seen in our diagram this middle cerebral artery is not forming it is the one which is not forming circle of willis okay so middle cerebral artery is the one which is not forming circle of willis okay now once you have understood this diagram here right now you know <clears throat> it will be like really really easy for you to trace you know all these arteries here in the circle of willis let's start right now guys <clears throat> Now in this diagram, I'm able to see there's an artery ascending up from here and this arteries will be your vertebral arteries guys. So this artery here will be the vertebral arteries and these vertebral arteries will ascend along the spinal cord and the middle oblong geta and you can clearly see this will unite together to form your basilar artery. So this one will be the basilar artery. And the most important thing here, the basilar artery will be finally, finally ending by dividing into two branches here and in this this one will be the posterior cerebral artery pca 
if you are able to appreciate in this diagram here right now guys this one will be the posterior cerebral artery be very careful with this one this is posterior cerebral artery okay now leave this posterior system here welcome to the anterior system in the anterior system i am able to find internal carotid artery here and this is another internal carotid artery on the other side here and we can appreciate here the internal carotid artery will give a branch that is anterior cerebral artery which is going here so on the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere so this is the internal carotid artery and this will be the anterior cerebral artery and then further this branch here will be nothing but your middle cerebral artery sir middle cerebral artery fine so let me just mark here right now guys this will be the internal carotid artery ica and this branch here this one here will be the aca anterior cerebral artery and this here will be the middle cerebral artery so the anterior cerebral artery the middle cerebral artery and this is the internal carotid artery and if you are able to appreciate here in this diagram you are able to see one branch which is going to come and join here this one is the posterior communicating artery here at us okay so there will be the posterior communicating artery in this manner there is a formation of circle of willis clear and now uh, i want to tell you one more thing here right now guys if you are able to see this diagram here in this diagram observe carefully this is basilar artery here and basilar artery will finally divide into posterior cerebral artery fine just behind this can you just appreciate here there is one more artery which is actually going here going here going here and it is finally going to the cerebellum here right now and this artery which is actually going to cerebellum here right now and that too from above the here above the cerebellum there and that will be the superior cerebellar artery that's actually from above superior cerebellar artery fine and now what is the point that i'm trying to teach you here is that between these two arteries the posterior cerebral artery and this one will be superior cerebellar be very careful it is not cerebral this one will be the superior cerebellar artery okay and if you are able to appreciate here what is the point that i am trying to teach you here between these two arteries the pca and superior cerebellar i can clearly see that there is a nerve here right now guys and that nerve will be the cranial nerve number 3 oculomotor nerve and now i want you all to recall my entire class right from the beginning till here yes my dear friends appreciate here this one is the interpeduncular fossa can you see here optic chasm optic tract infundibulum and this is the mammillary body and then here posterior perforating substance along with the cranial nerve number 3 there's a reason i taught you that topic just before this one now is it making the concept perfect is it okay so perfectly this is interpeduncular fossa and what is the nerve there cranial nerve number 3 and you can clearly see that third cranial nerve is between which two arteries the posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar important question already given in the exam and now one more point here is that which is the most commonly involved cranial nerve when there is intracranial aneurysm i repeat the question again which is the most common cranial nerve involved when there is a intracranial aneurysm you remember intracranial all those arteries will be undergoing like berry aneurysm agar hoga to and yes it is clearly evident here the nerve which is very much closest here to the artery here will be your third cranial nerve oculomotor nerve agar man lo is suppose if there is a aneurysm here okay the di dilatation permanent dilatation of the artery here yes this nerve will be getting compressed here and that will be the most commonly nerve involved in the aneurysm intracranial aneurysm and there is a reason why you know uh, you don't have to just simply memorize that uh, point like you know like a factual point don't need to memorize that you can clearly appreciate there yes the oculomotor nerve is the nerve which is between the posterior cerebral and superior cerebellar if there is an aneurysm here that is the nerve that is going to be most commonly compressed or involved there is it okay and one more thing the reason why i taught you about the brain stem the midbrain pons and medulla and the ventral aspect before this topic is yes my dear friends just see behind all this arteries is arteries ke piche dekho if you just observe behind the arteries this is the spinal cord just above that middle oblongata above that pons and then then here this is the midbrain and this is the interpeduncular fossa so basically your circle of willis is just surrounding this interpeduncular fossa here it is actually present there nearby okay so this is how you have to you know learn it you know very conceptual manner apart from that what else you can see here in this diagram remaining everything my students can easily identify and this will be the olfactory bulbs and the olfactory tracts here the olfactory bulbs and the olfactory tracts here right now and remaining everything you already know here right now guys okay fine here right now and that is about you know the blood supply now one thing in the recent aims exam there is one question asked there was a question asked 
actually it was an image based question i want you to appreciate one thing here right now guys if this is the internal carotid artery it's giving a branch that is the anterior cerebral and anterior cerebral is going on which side here on the medial side hai na this is the medial side if you observe the cerebral hemisphere in coronal section if you observe the cerebral hemisphere in the coronal section in this manner so the cerebral hemisphere has got how many surfaces guides three surfaces i am able to appreciate one surface here on this side this is the medial surface and i am able to see this surface here that is present below this will be the inferior surface and this surface is neither completely superior neither completely lateral so it is actually superior lateral so <clears throat> there is a medial surface and then superior lateral surface and then inferior surface medial surface superior lateral surface and inferior surface so this will be superior lateral so what i am trying to tell you here is that this internal carotid artery will give aca aca anterior cerebral artery is going on this surface towards which surface towards the medial surface and now just now in our previous diagrams you know i have shown you this surface here on the medial surface and whatever feedbacks we, i got from the students the students have showed that you know this was the structure marked okay and here was a structure was a marked here so basically what is the structure here right now guys fornix and now if they are marking this fornix structure here and they have asked in the exam ki what is the artery that is supplying to the blood to this one here okay so don't get panicked here right now basically he is asking you what is the artery that is supplying on to the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere so majority part of the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere will be supplied by anterior cerebral artery so answer if they are asking about the fornix what is the artery that is supplying to the fornix that will be the anterior cerebral artery i hope it is like very clear to you people so this is how try to correlate and uh, that was uh, all about you know this session here right now uh, which i wanted to discuss along with you people so basically guys try to remember whenever you are attempting for the competitive exam now we are uh, approaching the neat exam it is very much nearby so in the competitive exams mostly they'll be giving any one section of your brain perfectly like you know the coronal section cerebral section and then the transverse and then along with that i have completed the circular village the brain stem all the cranial lines originating from where the mental aspect of the brain stem so i hope these topics all these images and all will help you all this information will help you all the best for your preparation of the exam okay keep preparing always there for your help and please uh, let me know i'll be waiting for your suggestions and your feedbacks uh, <clears throat> about this uh, youtube live session thank you all take care all the best good night